Hey guys, what's up? Uh, Jeff Gobbold here from Gobbold Exotic. I'm here with uh, Glenn Brooks of Glenn Reptiles. Last time we were talking about Malagasy cat eye snakes. Uh, he also keeps rhino rats. So I wanted to kind of pick his brain a little bit on some of the husbandry requirements for this species. Um, not very many people have them, but they are very, very unique. I've got a male here and he's got a couple females that are in blue right now. Yeah. Um, Tell us. Tell us about them. One of the things I found fascinating about these animals, looking at them, I thought, oh, this looks like it's going to be a high requirement animal. We're going to have to put a lot of effort in. Um, but after I uh, got some, I realized they're easy to feed. They're very easily handled. They're not aggressive. They don't snap. But they will eat readily um, and they will breed readily. Um, and so uh, they've actually that they're not that difficult an animal to care for. There are a couple of tricks that I think people need to be mindful of. Um, they are high humidity animals, so in a place like uh, where, where I live, there's not a, it's pretty dry here. So right. um, I do some things to the, the, the cage that I hold them in. Um, I always give them a moist hide to get into. And they also love to sit in water bowls. Um, there is a caution to that. Let me um, grab one of them. I can grab one so you can show yeah. them. Uh, yeah. Although she's in blue here and it's hard to see, um, one of the things that happens is that not only do they like to sit in their water bowl, they love to poop in their water bowl. And that will not make them get out. <laughs> so they will sit in a dirty, soiled water dish for weeks on end if you will let them. Um, and so w when I got this girl, I got her as an adult, she had scarring that made her scales black. And she's gotten better, but it's still very noticeable how um, uh, injured her scales are. Um, so I'm very conscientious of check. Every time I come in, every day, I check to make sure she's not sitting in dirty water. Um, and if she has gone to the bathroom, it's been you know less than 24 hours. Um, usually less than eight hours and I will pull her out and I'll rinse her off and I'll wash out the bowl and put fresh water in um, just to make sure she doesn't get that infection again. They are very prone to getting this kind of pussy infection if they're too wet or if you let them sit in soiled water. Wow. So these are these two that are blue. These This is the size of an adult female then, correct? Yeah, actually this is an adult male. You're oh, holding, adult male. You're holding a three-year-old female here that's not Gotcha. Old. And she has a little bit of a white pattern on her. Yeah, she's got some speckling. Yeah, and this guy, my male, has some blue in him, which you can't see very well because of the shed. The, the shed. Um, and this girl's really green, um, except for her starry. <laughs> but yeah, these are these are large adults. Um, that's okay. a, They don't get much bigger than this. And so you're keeping these guys in what, like a three by two by two cage? Exactly, yeah. Gotcha. But arboreal, um, they, they love, they will be on in the trees um, most of the time if they're not in the water dish. Uh -huh. um, they also, while they're in their tank, they're always out in the open. That's the other thing, they're great display animals. Um, because in the wild, their, their, their defense is to look like a branch. Right. Not to hide. Like most snakes, their defense is to go hide in a hole. These guys, their defense is to look like a branch. So they sit up there on those um, poles or trees in your in your arboreal setup, and they just freeze. Huh. Um, and so they're always out. You can always see them. Um, and so they're they're a great display animal. Now, I've heard that the babies can be kind of tricky to get started, like with the guppies and whatnot. Is that is that something you've you've also experienced? Yeah, or is that... I, I got this one as a, a baby, that girl as a baby. Actually, I got that girl and a male as a baby. And um, they were, a, they, they would not be interested in mice, but they would readily take guppies. And so what I ended up doing was, once they ate a couple of guppies, uh, I would put them in a small deli cup with a uh, just a tiny bit of water on the bottom. Mm -hmm. um, I'd put a guppy and a frozen thawed pinky in there with them, uh, very small. And the guppy would flop around and they would grab that pinky 
as often as they grab a guppy. And once you get them to eat a couple of pinkies, they, they'll eat a pinky without uh, scenting. Wow. So that ended up working for me. However, uh, the male, for some reason, died. Oh. And I've heard that sometimes they pick something up from the guppies. Right. Some sort of parasite thing. So I am rethinking how that process goes. Um, These guys are coming. <laughs> oh! Oh! So uh, I am rethinking. At least they're not biters. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah um, whether that's the best method to use, or if there might be some other way to do that, um, I've read online. I, I actually didn't even make a connection until later. I read online where people said, "Yeah, I don't like to feed them guppies or goldfish because they might get a parasite or something." Right. Um, so um, I don't know if that was the reason, but that male was eating well. Look, you know, was doing great like this female. And all of a sudden, he stopped eating, wouldn't eat anything, and died within a reasonably short period of time. Rhino rat snakes, guys. Very cool species. Be sure and check them out. You can get a hold of Glenn on uh, Facebook, at Glenn Reptiles. Hit like or hit uh, the subscribe button below. You can look me up on Facebook at Godbold Exotics. You can email me at godboldexotics at gmail.com. Or you can also go on my website at www.godboldexotics.com. Thanks, guys. Thank you.